Tony, um, we're what? Closing in on the transfer deadline. Um, let's start by, by asking, are you expecting it to be busy in that regard over the next day and a half? I would like it to be busy, yes. Um, am I expecting it to be busy? I, I think so. I hope so. I think um, I've, sat in this, I've, I've sat here for the last two or three weeks telling you that oh, tomorrow somebody's coming in, you know, it's, um, and I genuinely believe that, and yet the deals are, are, are hard to make happen. But um, I've just left the boardroom there with the owner in, with the sporting director in, with everybody who makes decisions at this football club, the whole recruitment department in. They're all grafting away. and um, So, yeah, let's hope we're really busy the next 36 hours. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's potentially movement in both directions. There is a lot of talk about Ross Stewart leaving the club before the deadline. Is there anything that you can tell us about that? No, I don't think so. I, I think... Um, Again, I, I, I'm not in. <laughs> the meeting's going on. I'm not in it. I'm, I'm here. You know. I, I think um, what I would suggest is you, it, it, it can't be getting sold unless we, the, shi the, 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 the knight and shining army comes riding through the door. Really, I think. And so I, I would think that would be the case. I would hope that um, we have a, a striker for the future if Ross is. No, it's been a long time that we've been trying to get Ross to sign a deal. So, um, but I, as I said here truthfully, I don't know about Ross Stewart. It's, it's you know, you've, I've been asked this question fifty times now over the last year. Nothing's changed as far as I can see. He's either going to be here after Friday night and hopefully fit in a few weeks and trying to score some goals before January and the saga starts again, um, or you know. We take a huge bid for him, and we spend all of that money on some brilliant strikers who are going to make a difference for us. And um, you know, as I always say in football, the king is dead. Long live the king! Really, you know, one goes out, the next one comes in. He has to become the hero, score the goals, and the fans soon forget the last one. Um, I appreciate you did say that that you're not in the room, but have you been given any assurances that that he won't be moved on unless he gets another attacker in? No, no, listen, I. I I think all them things are just common sense, aren't they? And yet, I, I don't know any numbers that might have been bid. Um, if if the numbers are really good, surely you take the deal and you spend the money. Um, and yet, what I do know is that some of these players that we look at and we talk about, they are extremely overly priced and yet isn't the whole market overly priced right from the very very top at 115 million down to a, a championship club trying to sign a striker and it becomes multiple millions of pounds and um, so let's wait and see what, what I can say here is everybody's working hard everybody is really aware of the situation hopefully common sense over the next few days prevails and we get some players in that help the team moving forward. Um, you've got to prepare for a football match during all this, and it, it'll probably be a tough football match as well against a very good team. Um, yeah. But first of all, how much of a distraction is this sort of circus over uh, over the job of actually getting the team out of time? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect me because my job is to coach the team, which I've done this morning, and we prepared, and we I've been studying Southampton. That you're correct to say they're a very good team. Um, we know the coach obviously from Swansea, their ball retention, they're going to keep the ball, they're going to move it around, they're going to shift it about the pitch. What I would say is Southampton probably have a total respect to Swansea City, have, have probably have better individuals than what Swansea had where the coach worked with a team that were very ball possession orientated. And um, From what we've watched, Southampton are very ball possession orientated. It's we have to make sure in our stadium with our fans that together, collectively, we um, make life as difficult for them as we can and make sure they realise they've been in a tough game. Um, you've given everyone a game that you've played so far this season. How, how, how do you sort of feel looking, looking at the first few games that the team has performed? I think the performance level of the team has been all right, it's good. I mean, we sat in here the other day with the whole first team squad and went through the first four matches with um, 
things like the field tilt, the possession, the shots, uh, the touches in the opposition box, um, the expected goals for and against. And I have to say it was a pretty positive meeting because we are generally in the top six, if not the top four of most of those things in the league, you know, expected goals against, I think we're second or third, and yet we've we've lost, I don't know how many goals we lost, five, five have we six, seven, I don't know, but um, but the expected goals, you know, two deflections I can I can think of that would ricochet off people's knees and went in and um, yeah, and so our, our possession stats have been really high and um, I think the only thing that's not really high is the goals for and um, and that's in my opinion there's a, there's a relevance to that and um, even though we're having lots of the ball we're getting around the opposition box lots our expected goals is lots we don't seem to have a, a killer centre forward whose life depends on putting the ball in the back of the net and um, I think once we resolve that we'll be a pretty good team and, and if we can keep doing what we've done in four games over 40 games we won't be far away I'm pretty sure um, you've had your first anniversary this week. Uh, how much have you enjoyed? Um, some time rolls by in football. The games keep coming really fast. Um, a year. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how have I enjoyed it. Um, I hope the team are progressing. I hope the club is moving forward. Um, and I hope we can continue to move forward and progress into the next year, really. But um, you don't take much. You know, we have to achieve. We have to win football matches, and um, that's the only way you can enjoy football by winning on a Saturday, on a Tuesday, or a Wednesday. And um, otherwise, the time's irrelevant for me. Because if I'm not, I'm not part of a winning structure, a winning team, I won't be here much longer. And uh, if we are part of a winning team, we could be here as long as, as long as everybody's happy. So. Um, I would like to keep growing the team, developing the team, adding to the team, and making us better and stronger. And um, you know, one year can turn into two. like like Blackburn Rovers in my mind. One year turned into two, turned into three, turned into four, turned into five. Um, because the, you could see the progression of the team. That we were buying footballers. We were getting the young players out of the youth team and, and establishing them in the first team. And um, the fans buy into that. And so. Um, that's the plan, but just to keep going. And in football, you have to manage clubs as if you're going to be here forever, but realising, you know, four games down the line, if you lose them all, you're probably out. Thank you. Thank you. So, if, if Ross were to leave, what would be the overriding emotion for you? Would it be relief that the saga, as you described it, was over, or would it be disappointment that, that he's gone? It would be joy that he's stayed? Um, Around the building, he's great, you know, I see him every day there. He's been out training, he's on the grass at the moment, so I see him every day. I see him in the canteen. I see him playing pool in the dressing room with the lads. Um, he's just one of the players, really. He's, he's, he's unavailable at the moment. I haven't really felt, as somebody who might know how many, you know, I've been here a year, how many games has Ross Stewart actually played in while I've been here? Less than 10, probably. Um, We've been having to try and find a way without him, and so I, I, I can't sit here and say, "Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to shed tears," because, and yet, you know, my first game a year ago, he scored two in a, in a three-nil win against Rotherham, and um, so do I know he's a really good centre forward? Yeah, you know, my staff tell me, "Oh, he's, he's probably up there with the best two or three in the whole league," and if we had him at the cutting edge of our team, oh, who knows what we could be? It doesn't look to me like that's going to happen. Um, the time scale of it seems too too long. But um, I won't be sitting here going, "Oh, thank God that saga's over with," because he hasn't affected me. He hasn't been on the pitch. It's not something I'm going to miss. Um, but I do know that we could do with a, a lad who scores goals every time he goes on the pitch. Because it'll even the days we don't play well, and there's going to be plenty of them. We still win because we've got a goal scorer who, who bangs it in the net when the chance comes as opposed to having all these these field, field tilts and possession stats always playing around the opposition box, controlling the majority of the pitch, but not scoring enough goals to win. Um, because ultimately we get judged on winning football matches. So um, if Ross were to go, who's the next one? Let's get him down the middle and let's have him banging goals in and, um, and 
that's that's the job really. You know, my mind would be I'd be disappointed if if he did go and there was no replacement. You know, and yet we sit here with Hamir, we are trying to grow into a championship footballer. The young boy Eliza, his second name Meander, he, he looks so exciting on the videos of watching him. You know, but he, first training day he got injured. He looks powerful and fast and quick and can bang it in with both feet. He's only 18, but um, let's get him fit and on the pitch and having a cutting edge in, in our team, and, and, and we hopefully will will reap the benefits of it. But um, I don't sit here and, and worry about one particular footballer. I think, and as as I've always said to you, if it's time for him to move on, good luck to him and his family. And um, it's a short career. I, 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 I was a footballer, so I understand why people want to move sometimes. And um, and I go back to that phrase, once he's gone, somebody else will fill the void and score the goals and the fans will love them and create a chant for them. And, and we'll have moved on, as this club has done over the years, you know, since I played against Kevin Phillips and Niall Quinn. It's, but they've had, you know, Charlie Wyke over recent years and, um, you know, I don't know, Will Grigg, I don't know how these players did, but... Um, this this one is was that funny was it I don't I don't know I didn't know how well they did but um, but Ross Stewart obviously did has done pretty well in his short time at this football club but once he's gone somebody else will fill the void and and the fans will love them if he scores goals and comes what an opportunity for a striker to come to a club who has so much of the ball and creates so many chances to go and score goals you're not going to a team struggling at the bottom never have a shot or game play with thirty percent possession and you play off the scraps we're a team that. We will create chances, and you have a chance to go and be a hero. With that in mind, then, is it how difficult is it trying to find that that play that every other side's chasing, someone who can put it in the back of the net? Because you sound really frustrated that it's not going that way. How difficult is it trying to get that that body? So I'm not at the face, the the cold face of that. To be honest, I, 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 it must be really frustrating for for Christian or Stuart Harvey or you know or the owner. It, I'm coaching the players that I'm given, and I and I trying to find a way. And um, but they all know they're not. None of these people haven't been around football for a while. They know that you need strikers. You know, you. I watched Everton last night at Doncaster. You know, goodness me, for staff was a toil, and then they brought their twenty nine million pound centre forward on, who banged one in straight away, and then hit the post, and everything changed. It's. When you haven't got one, a, a, a guy who leads the line, a guy who threatens the space behind, a guy when the cross is coming, he's in the box fighting to get first contact. Football can be difficult if you've got to play lovely pitches and lovely passing patterns to get in to score wonderful goals all the time. Because football isn't isn't like that. You've got to score lots of types of goals. And um, yeah, so I, listen, I'm, I'm not frustrated. I'm part of a team, and the, and the team are all working hard. We're all at it, and, and in 36 hours. We can all talk about, you know, the next press conference. We'll all talk about how the window looked, and um, and I'm pretty sure if we don't get the players we want, we'll all be disappointed. And I'll be right to say we're disappointed. If we do get the players, then I'll be saying I can't wait to get started and look forward to, you know, this player becoming, you know, a, a name at this club that other fans are loving, and, and it's great, and the team are winning games.